I went to see it last night. I was not expecting it to be deep. It's and to have this <laughs> right to have like, and then I was like, well, you oh, were steering this ship, so it made a lot of sense. Thank you. What attracted you to this project? And talk to me about the process of how you decided to make it what it is. Well, yes, I mean, I it's it's true. I think I mean initially the thing that I was attracted by or wanted to do was it was Margot Robbie who brought me into it because she had the rights with her company to Barbie and they were putting it up together at Warner Brothers and she asked me if I wanted to write it. And then I said, my uh, partner in, in life and also art, um, Noah Baumbach, I said, well, he'd like to write it too, which he did not totally know until um, he was like, what are, are we writing a Barbie movie? What is this? And I was like, yes, turns out we are. Um, but I think it was something, it, it was such a, it's, it was, honestly, it was such a head scratcher, like to, to, to figure out like how are we, what is what, what is the story we're gonna tell here? What is even, like how do we deal with this? I mean, Barbie's been a, a invented. She was invented in 1959, and she exists until now. And she's gone through so many different iterations. And my mom did not like Barbie, and so I had all of that front in front of mind of like all the the ways in which she's a complicated icon. And I think. Um, it, it, Instead of rejecting all of that, we just sort of ran towards it. Like all of the complications and all of the things that felt thorny was like, we'll just let's start there. And I think that's what we we wanted to do. And I, yeah, I I always wanted it to be you know really funny and really like beautiful and and sort of dazzling. And then I I always had this dream that at the end you'd be like, why why am I why am I crying? What, what's going on? How is this possible? Uh, um, and uh, it just that I wanted it to be able to sneak up on you. And it does. I like that point you just raised too about running towards all those thorny, prickly things. Yeah. Because I feel like that's a great metaphor for life. That's where our power is. Yeah. Is like in that authenticity and in just the truth. Yes. Of yeah. all of it. And don't be afraid of that. Yeah. And I think that 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 too is like the journey that she's on is you know it's such a human thing when things start falling apart yeah. as they do is that you say oh no 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 I don't want that I want everything to stay just as it is but it's like if you fight it it's not gonna help you just sort of have to let go and be like it's gonna fall apart mm -hmm. and that's okay and because Barbie is this emblem of plastic perfection I was like, what better journey to give her than one that uh, gives her humanity and allows her to kind of fall apart. I feel like that's where the true beauty is, in the unraveling. Yes, I mean always, but it doesn't. But it doesn't stop us from fighting it every right. oh, yeah, time. Oh no, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, no, but not me, not <laughs> yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's. It was, it was actually something Margot. The way she says, there was a moment when Gloria, played by America so beautifully, says. Um, well, that's life, Barbie. It's all change. And she says, well, that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's the truest thing. Yeah. It's just terrifying. And Margot's so overwhelmed when she says it. And then she just has a childish meltdown because I think, you know, that's what we do. But I, in any case, it was... Um, it was written in the pandemic, so there were a lot of... There were a lot of big, big <laughs> questions floating around. Sure. And I think, um, you know, sometimes uh, I, I think finding finding these these things I think sometimes you're or for me anyway as a director I'm able to go m more uh, find deep depth in things that appear just like fluff yeah. more easily mm -hmm. in a way because because um, it's not where anyone's looking so then you can kind of mm -hmm. pluck it out mm -hmm. um, it's the one of my favorite movies Sullivan's travels that's kind of the message of the end is like where you think it's just lightness and play, there's actually a lot of depth and meaning. Yeah, yeah. and there really, really was here. Let's talk about Margot yeah. and, and Ryan. Yes. <laughs> right. Margot was saying, I was just talking to her, that Ryan was you all's first choice if, yes, for Ken. Yes. She was like, there was no other Ken. There it was, was no Ryan. other Ken. Yeah. There was never another Ken. I mean, there was, the, it was a long process because we wrote it for him. And then, you know, we were in this process of talking to him about it. And then we waited and we moved it and we we th there was a long road to yes but there was really never another Ken that mm -hmm. could and I 
I'd never worked with him or met him, and I just knew it was him. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was. I was right. Mm -hmm. But I feel like uh, I can't. I still can't believe he did it. Really? Yeah, because it was like. It did Ryan Gosling really like it for me? Um, yeah, but and he, he brought that Kennergy. So much! He which like, he says cannot be explained. I said, how would you define it? He's like, it's hard to define. You can't define it. You know, literally, you like, w like we will still text each other. I sent him a video the other day of something that I felt had extreme Kennergy. He was like, that is Kennergy in the wild. You, you found it. And then... But what things do you have good Kennergy? What's one thing? What's one thing? Um... I think, well, I think there's, <laughs> this just sounds insane, but these are the conversations we'd have. I think there's self-actualized Kennergy, which is where Ken gets to at the end of the movie. I think, um, uh, uh, men in their, like, in their sort of strength and confidence, um, supporting women with, like, an open hand, but that, like, nobody, everybody just, like, a rising tide lifts all boats. Everybody yeah. wants everybody to soar. Yeah. Um, there's a feeling of, like, just that good energy, mm -hmm. that good, like, I am Kenneth. <laughs> I am Kenneth. Oh, <laughs> that's a new one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I am Kenneth. I am Kenneth. Yeah. Yeah, but it's definitely, like, it's a, it, I, I honestly, you really do know it, but it, it was like, it, it came from, even like, before the movie came out, he was shooting in Australia, after we shot, and he like texted me and Margot on Halloween in Australia, he saw a man dressed as Ken, <laughs> just like, in, out on the street, and the movie wasn't even out, and he, and there was a man, and I, and we were like, that's Ken Ergy. he's so, and he was like, I hope his Barbie shows up. <laughs> and I was like, I know, but if if she doesn't, he almost embodies it more. I keep thinking of, there's a Beyonce song on her Renaissance album called Energy. Yeah. And I keep hearing Ken Energy. Oh, and yeah. Energy in my I'm going to go see Beyonce right before my 45th birthday. When's your, when is your birthday? August 4th. Get I'm out. Like, I'm turning 40 on August 25th. No. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes. 1983. Yes, amen. Oh, that's, yeah. so good. That's, that's that year. Yeah. No, um, no, I'm I'm seeing her on the 28th of July in New Jersey. Amazing. I'm so excited. I'm like, this movie's gonna come out, and then I'm gonna go to see Beyonce in New Jersey. I can't wait. Sounds like a pretty luxurious moment in time. Oh, it's like dreamy. That's yeah. Beautiful.